Welcome to the Horror Hangout, a podcast where two bearded film fans watch the 50 best horror movies ever and talk about them. My name is Luke Condor with a K, and I'm joined by my regular co-host, Mr. Mr. Ben Arrington. <laughs> I like that delay. Oh, no. uh, I know. Del- yeah. That delay just for effect. Um, don't know why. I've decided to go. trim the beard in a fair bit. So you I have. You look, you look ever so young, Luke. Yeah, I know, yeah. I've, I've, t- I've shaved off years. <laughs> you look uh you look 14 again yeah i look about 14 a bold 14 year old a bold 14 year old which is uh that's totally normal you know yeah um i don't know it just feel, felt like i needed to um change it up a bit get, get yeah a i know tattoo. what you mean when it's when it's ever so warm you kind of feel like you want your face to be able to breathe somewhat yeah you know what my neck was getting very itchy very itchy mm. i kind of trim my neck i trim my neck yeah, right yeah. up. Nice. Just mainly, mainly just because. Uh, <laughs> nice, nice. nice. Give yeah. the old neck a good trim. Yeah, yeah. I suffer from itchy neck syndrome as well, Luke. This is must. This must be an incredibly interesting podcast to listen to so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, just to dive in. Then, so in other horror news, Toby Hooper has died. He died like three or four days after our last recording, where we talked about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, kind of, kind of crazy. Huge loss in the world of horror. I think it was. Um, the 26th of August, he, he died, so that was two days ago from today. Uh, yeah. Kind of, kind of crazy, right? I feel like... Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's a little bit Weird bad. timing, yeah. And also, like, George That's... Romero died around the same time we recorded the uh, uh, Night of the Living Dead. Oh, no. Don't, don't say there's a pattern here, Luke, please. I'm a bit worried. We've got John Carpenter coming up. Oh, God. Don't don't you even dare utter the John, words. John Carpenter's like... Um, like he's a rock and roller, he's like on tour, like just doing new albums and stuff, doing live yeah. performances. <laughs> yeah, there's life in the old dog. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's weird. To see. I, yeah, it's so all gonna do. I'm gonna watch um, another Toby Hooper film. There's two more that I think that we should probably watch at some point. There's a Life Force, which looks insane. Have you seen that? Uh, mm, don't think so. And one called Funhouse as well that that I've not seen, but I really want to watch. No. Didn't he do? Didn't he do Salem's Lot as well? Is that right? Yeah, he did the. The, the season one I think um, there's another one called The Return to Salem Slot which isn't um, based yeah, on right. Stephen King thing. yeah so I think he did that one um, he did like the classic Danny Glick scene um, yeah yeah on, yeah of on course the window sort of thing but yeah so I feel like um, I don't know I kind of, it's weird because I feel like Toby Hooper and Georgia Romero like them and their first two films kind of had like a lot in common like super low budget it's like a sort of socio-political sort of realism um, with them, and just sort of defined genres. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. the zombie genre and like the, um, the cannibal, um, the, the, the cannibal um, Leatherface uh, hick. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> that that crazy genre. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And I always say his name wrong, so I feel I feel equally bad for Toby. calling him to- Toe Pooper all the time. <laughs> but it's just one of those things, you know, you see it written down a lot and you never really actually uh, yeah. hear anyone utter it. So, no. so Sorry, it's, Toby. It's quite a few times when... Um, so there'll be plenty of words that I use uh, in like writing and, and like reading stuff. I read them all the time. Never that confident to say them out loud because I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea how it's supposed to be pronounced. Do you know what one gets me all the time? Hyperbole. Hyperbole, yeah. Hyperbole. <laughs> Um, uh, hyperbole. <laughs> How is it pronounced? Because I always say ever, hyperbole. Ever, <laughs> ever so confusing. It's one of those that I try not to say out loud as much. Hyperbole, as possible. I think it is. I'm pretty yours, sure it's hyperbole. Yours sounds way posher. Hyperbole. But I think I think I thought it was hyperbole, and then when everyone ever, when someone said it once, I was like, huh? Yeah. But then I thought I was in the right by going, "You're saying that wrong." But then I decided I didn't say anything. I've heard people say hyperbole, and I thought it was some, like a sports game. <laughs> <laughs> well, like rollerball. Yeah, hyperball. Hey, um, let's go play some hyperball. Sounds too intense. Yeah. Sounds way too intense for me to <laughs> for me to want to enjoy. Hyperball. Okay, so uh, in, terms Hyper of, in terms of the the show, we're, we're now on number twenty six of the fifty best horror movies ever. Um, last week we did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, as I said, and this week we're going to be doing the Others, which came out in two thousand and one, which is sixteen years ago, and that seems insane to me. It doesn't feel like yeah. an old. It's not like I don't know. It feels like a quite a recent film, but then again, yeah, we're old now. 
<laughs> like maybe we're just getting really old. Speak for yourself, Luke. I mean, uh, I know I'm older than you, but uh, yeah, you come could, on. You could trim your beard all you want. We still, you know, age. Exactly. I could. Yeah. Well, I could trim my beard all I want. I could dress like a 14 year old. I'm dressed a bit like a 14 year old today. I've got a Metallica t-shirt on, and you can't see, but I've got uh, some camouflage shorts on. Nice, nice. I look like cross between a 14 year old and like a uh, possible uh, southern. Don't want to say racist. Don't want to say that southern hick. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're not um, an antagonist from a, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, you're not the guy <laughs> who uh, who would drive by at the end in, in the truck and like help the final girl get away. Yeah, I'm the one. Who t- I'm the one who took on Leatherface and lived to tell the tale. Yeah, yeah. Or did it? Did he live? Yeah, I think so. One of them lived. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you want to tell us a bit about the film? I uh, will. I will tell you a bit about The Others. So The Others is a 2001 Spanish-American supernatural gothic horror film. Um, it was written, directed, and scored, that's interesting, um, by Alejandro Aminabar. Mm, very interesting. Ooh, it stars Nicole Kidman and Fianula Flanagan. That's a good name. Um, as well as, obviously, Others. The Others. Uh, that's it. It sounded like I was going to say something else then, but that is the end okay. of the bit I was going to say. So this is what uh, Empire Magazine had to say. A classical ghost story in the uh-huh, spirit of The Innocents and Robert Wise's The Haunting. The others has lent added poignancy for the relatable teaching presence at its heart. Protective mum, played by Kidman, uh, just wants to shield her two photosensitive weans from the bright, unforgiving world outside their creaking country pile. It's a task that's made increasingly difficult for all the eerie goings-on within it. Spanish director Alejandro Amenabar... <laughs> Conjures icy atmospherics from the gothic scenario, proving that less is definitely more when it comes to scares. Rotten Tomatoes gave it an 83%. Uh, that's out of 100, if you didn't know. Uh, IMDb gave it a 7.6. And the Facebook group, the Horror Hangout Board of Advisors, Matthew Stott says, I remember thinking it was going to be great, but by the end, I was just a bit shrug. Uh, Tommy Draper says, I like atmosphere, but found it very dull. Didn't like the twist ending. I've not seen it again, even after 16 years. Then Edward Harvey says, from what I remember, it was really creepy and had a good atmosphere, uh, but I don't remember any huge scares. So, the board of advisors um, are kind of like, it's it's good, but it's a little bit meh. Um, I don't know, man, what, what do you think about this? Is this, what, is this? Should this be this high on the list? Um, well, that's the, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, it got, it, it got, it's a huge The Innocence vibe, definitely. I was definitely, after seeing that film... It felt very similar. Um, I always thought that I'd never seen this film. When, when I was about to watch it, um, I thought, I've never seen this. I'm glad we're going to watch it. And when I did, it all kind of came hurtling back towards me. I've actually seen it a couple of times. That's it hurtling towards me. Oh, my God! <laughs> the cold Kidman yeah, came hurtling towards me. Nearly got me in the yeah. chops. <laughs> Nearly got me in the chops, the cold Kidman, and her <laughs> crazy, crazy uh, shotgun-wielding antics. Yeah. Um, and with I... a pillow. And it, it all kind of exactly. She loves pillow, and I kind of realised so I've only ever seen it, but like I've seen a lot of parts of it. Mm. I think I've never ever sat down and watched it, and that's actually how I watched it this time. In a few parts, I didn't watch it in one sitting. Um, I always thought I kind of didn't really like it. I think I like some bits. Other bits kind of get on my nerves. Um, I think it's a fairly well made <clears throat> film. Um, I think in terms of. Obviously, we are just going to discuss spoilers, mm-hmm. um, especially one very big one. In terms of twist ending, um, it's one of those that everybody kind of says, oh, I saw that coming a mile off, uh, that twist ending. Yeah. Um, but I can't remember if I ever see, saw this film without knowing the twist ending, so it's hard to put into context whether it actually works as a twist ending. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't but, you'd say whatever you've ever known. Even just going into this film knowing there is a twist ending means you start to look for the clues. Like if you if you knew the ending, or if you know if you went to watch The Sixth Sense and you knew that there was a twist ending, I think you could quite quickly pick up what it is. But yeah. if you go into a film without knowing what the ending is going to be, then then I don't know. I think it's kind of intriguing. I think this film is very neat and it's very tidy and it's not really like um, it reminds me of Del Toro. Uh, but like it's not got anywhere near the, the, the bite to it that Del Toro films have. Like I think this is a, a much tidier version um, of The Devil's Backbone, much tidier ghost story, and I, I don't know, I, I, I prefer the roughness. I prefer, yeah, the, the like little touches of crazy. Or this film just feels very a little bit paint by numbers, 
Um, yeah, it felt a bit paint by numbers. I also felt like the soundtrack was telling me how to feel a lot. <laughs> I get that a lot with films. You know, when the soundtrack is just so bad, you're just yeah. like, God, the tension. I'm only feeling tense because of the music. I'm not feeling tense at all because of what's going on on the screen. Suddenly the music's ramping up and I'm getting terrified, but that's because of the music. I mean, yeah. is that is that a good thing or is that something yeah. that's genuine? Is that a bit weak? Like Occasionally, I felt like the music got very, very dramatic at times, which weren't so dramatic at all. Oh, we played its hand. But that might that might be Alejandro, because he was a composer as well, right? So maybe maybe he shouldn't have done that. Maybe he should have got someone yeah. else in to do that. I just say, that was one thing, because I don't know if, for some reason, I don't know if it's a, it's, it's a problem with my TV, Luke. I'm going to talk about my TV. What happens when I'm watching films is that music action sequences are really loud, and when it gets down to dialogue, it gets really quiet. So oh, what I tend to yeah. do... I like I like adjust the volume when I'm when there's some dialogue, but most of the time I forget to turn it back down, and then suddenly, bam! That's yeah. pretty. And I think, it's, I it's think that's the uh, like the comp- something to do with the compression or something of the of the um the I think that's just the way films are like to, to try and get you to sort of lean in in the quiet bits, and they just sort of slap you around the face when it when it annoys me now especially yeah. with a film That's like this so which annoyed. I did <laughs> especially with a film like this turn where I don't it film. down <laughs> turn it down man Jesus Christ turn it down turn um, flipping things <laughs> you're like uh, an old man like uh, I am like an old man yeah um, it's true in more ways than one <laughs> um, uh, but I feel kind of like the film's tricking me by this yeah. point because I'm like I'm annoyed because I'm not as invested in this film as this film thinks I am so when the music starts doing those things and it starts making me have extreme emotional responses to something that you I don't feel, like, feel that invested in. You can't in. manipulate me, man. I'm not feeling that way. Like... Yeah, man. <laughs> hey. Hey, music. <laughs> don't go telling me how to feel. Yeah. Uh, I mean, also, I mean, uh, so uh, sat down to watch this with a cat and she said, oh, this is one of those Shyamalan films, isn't it? And that's weird because it's not a Shyamalan film. But yeah. it came around. It came out around the same time as the Sixth Sense and uh, the Village, that sort of same era. And I, I'm sure at some point in my life, I thought it was a Shyamalan film as well. I think I just assumed because of that twist ending. But it feels very yeah. sort of Shyamalan-y a little bit. It is does. that just a twist ending, or is that? Yeah, probably. But there's definitely a Shyamalan vibe. I mean, they probably bounced. If it's, I think it's two, Sixth Sense was 1999, so it's two years later. They probably were. I mean, that was such a cultural phenomenon that film yeah it's probably hard not to be influenced by something like that when you're making a horror slash ghost story yeah yeah. it's in a similar vein not necessarily to the sixth sense i know what you mean yeah as soon as as you had a twist ending in there people were going to be like and it ended like a horror type story people were going to be like ah m night Shyamalan. like they were instantly going to say that's the Shyamalan film because it because it has that trope in there i guess yeah, exactly. I'll tell you what, um, like, no, so this, is, <laughs> this is the first time I've watched this film. Um, so I've seen this about four or five times now. Um, this is the first time I've watched this film uh, after having seen The Innocence. And it's one of the reasons why I really like yeah. this podcast and watching all these films because I watch horror films all the time, but I tend to just stick to like new stuff. And the fact that we're doing this kind of forces you to go back. And now I can watch a lot of the horror films of today and like and link back and go, ah, oh, that's interesting. That's got that yeah. element from this other film and um mm. i think it's given me a, a much wider uh a much more uh, mature uh, r- refined palette of <laughs> <laughs> got... horror films i've got a very refined horror palette uh, don't go <laughs> feed me any old shit because i won't yeah. be interested all yeah. right i know what you mean like yeah, um yeah. i kind of i kind of used well i kind of used to watch i watch a lot of horror but again i would stick to a lot of the things that i liked i wasn't i wasn't i didn't delve into like modern horror very much because I kind of didn't like it so much, and the same with films that are much older. Like I never really delved in. So from like the seven seventies to the nineties, the, cl- the other side of the cliff. Are you like, on a little island? <laughs> I'm on a little <laughs> island, and uh, it's called the seventies to trip. late nineties. Yeah, is it late nineties? You... When? What, so what's the other side of the cliff for you? Well, the, so well, there, there's plenty. There's plenty of horror. There's plenty of modern horror I enjoy, mm. but there's definitely a time of horror films that I start to think most of it's crap. Most, yeah. most, most of it. You know what I mean? There'll be loads and loads of jewels, obviously, but I reckon from maybe 2005. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So maybe. don't hold me to that, but you know, <laughs> no, 2005, what January? Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe February, maybe <laughs> February. <laughs> yeah. But as I said, like, I enjoy a lot of modern horror films, but I think certain tropes in horror started to, Maybe later than that then. I reckon since Paranormal Activity came around, 
is when horror starts to really get on the pan for me. Yeah, yeah. What about like films? Here like... was a jump scare. Here was a jump scare. Oh no, yeah, like that sort of stuff. Okay, but what about films? Um, I'm trying to think of like good, you know, horror films that sort of a good regard, like Get Out. I mean, is is one example that is obviously a good horror film. There are those like ones that stand out, though, right? Oh yeah, there's plenty. Absolutely, lo- still loads. But I'm just, I just mean in a, in a very, very general that... term in terms of like mainstream releases, yeah. cinema releases, popular films, like anything like Paranormal Activity, Insidious, all of those films that have consequentially birthed other films. Yeah, birthed the Conjuring universe. Is, is what it's called now. Yeah, yeah. Although, although, to be fair, I don't mind the country and films. I think they're pretty great. I need to uh, watch the new Annabelle film at some point. It's uh, directed by David Sandberg. It's meant to be alright. It's by the guy who did the Lights Out film. I, I don't think I've film. seen. I don't see. I think I've seen the first Annabelle film. I don't think you need to. The first one's not very good. But um, yeah. Tell you what, I did watch. It's uh, a recent modern horror that I really enjoyed. Um, Hush. It's a Netflix original. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. came out of nowhere. Oh, is it a Netflix original? Is it? Didn't, didn't get any sort of theatrical release. Um, directed by Mike Flanagan, who uh. um, did Oculus, which I think was I think was okay. But this was really surprising. I thought it was really solid little slasher home invasion type of horror film. It's really good. I've not seen that, so I will probably go and watch that on your recommendation, Luke. I will totally recommend it. And he's uh, also directing um, Gerald's Game, Stephen King's Gerald's Game. It's going to be another Netflix original, like. Uh, just oh. release. It'd be interesting. Very interesting indeed. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the others again. Uh, so the cast, the key players. Uh, so we've got Nicole Kidman. She plays a woman, a lovely lady called Grace Stewart. Um, and she puts on this sort of, um, I think they call it RP English accent, which isn't like a real English accent. It's just um, the middle to upper class sort of English accent. It's, it's you know, Mary Poppins sort of esque. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Fionola Flanagan plays Bertha Mills. She's like um, uh, the head of the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> head of laundry, head of the laundry, baking, and uh, uh, starchy she's, collars. She's I think a bloody so. slave at the end of the day, isn't she? Look, like, she's a slave. She's Don't a, look at any other way. She's the head of that department: laundry and starchy and collars. Um, Christopher Eccleston he pops in for a quick shag which we'll talk about later on <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Is it? laughs> you're describing this film very str- if you're describing it, pitching this film to somebody well I've got this idea right we've got Nicole Kibber doing an accent Christopher Eccleston pops in for a quick shag someone's starching his collar when he's not someone's starching his collar while he's having sex with it. <laughs> it's also very awkward <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Eric Sykes plays a Mr. Edmund Tuttle, who plays this sort of like uh, I don't know how to describe him. He's, he's like, Alan Titch. Yeah, the... yeah. He's, he's the gardener. He um, loves leaves. I think he's supposed to be like slightly Yorkshire, Yorkshireman sort of thing. Um, he has this weird way of talking when he, everything sounds kind of sarcastic. Yeah, and, and sort of slow. He's that. He's actually one of my favorite characters in the film. Um, he's he been really a real good. sarcastic bastard. There's two, yeah. there's two 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 little kids in it who yeah. uh yeah. who grace who, who are grace's kids um and their dad's gone off to war uh before he comes back for a quick shag um <laughs> and they're like they're like photo sensitive um so all the, all the they're in, the, in this massive house but all of the curtains are drawn constantly and there's like a whole obsession of locking one door before you open another just to trap the light and i think she says at one point Treat this house like a ship. Um, the light is like water. Yeah, that's quite a good. Uh, uh, Keep it. Yeah, quite a like good it. analogy. Got yeah, me thinking yeah. about it for a while. It did. I was thinking yeah. about it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Very, very well thought out. Um, yeah. So this is in uh, Jersey Island. Um, I think post World War Two. Um, it's just like coming to the end of World War Two, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Nazis have, have fobbed off now, right? The Nazis have done a run, aren't they? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so it, it opens um, with a sort of weird storybook sort of thing, um, which I was reading that uh, the director, he this film was inspired by those same sort of storybooks he used to read as a kid. It's like a weird little illustrated book, and they're sort of talking about families and uh, good family living and that kind of thing. Um, so 
and then you know, so we're introduced to these characters, uh, the children's disease, that kind of thing, and then the three servants pop up, um, just knock on the door. Yeah. Um, so we've got Bertha Mills, Mister Tuttle, and there's a mute girl called uh, Lydia. Um, I think they say that they want a job. Does that sound right? They say. I think I think they say they want a job. They worked in the house years ago, um, and then Grace sort of claims that their last servant's just up and left out of nowhere. Didn't even leave a note. Yeah, uh, they just they fobbed right off. Yeah. So and there's like a so it's like it's a creepy mist as well that sort of hangs around uh, the the garden, the grounds. So you can can never see um, pretty much past the like the driveway of the of the estate, um, past past the like the, the yard sort of thing. Um, so yes, it's, it's got a sort of creepy atmosphere. Uh, the kids are, are already super creepy. I mean, are they as creepy as the innocence kids to you? I don't, I don't know. Did they look quite creepy to me. Mm, I don't know if they're as creepy as the Innocence Kids. They're definitely a little bit more annoying. Hmm. Or maybe equally annoying as the Innocence Kids. Yeah, yeah. Do we... Um, should, should we... I mean, try, I'm trying not to say the spoiler here, but I, I feel like the... Um, the... <laughs> the what's it called? The, the servants should be kind of scared of the kids anyway. Because... In fact, I can't really, I can't really talk about this without sort of spoiling it. So we'll have to loop back around. But, save um, it. Yeah, we'll save it. Don't keep that. Put a pin in that one. But um, okay, so, <laughs> um, so Anna. So the two kids. We've got Anna and Nicholas. Yeah. Anna starts talking to um, uh, Miss Mills, who's like the head of laundry, and she says um, the servants left after Mummy went mad. And that's like all we pretty much know. It's all very sort of ominous and creepy. Um, we get the idea that the servants know the house. There's something a little bit weird about them. Um, and then um, I think Nicole Kidman says there's no such thing as ghosts. It's all it's all nonsense. And um, I don't know. We definitely get the idea pretty much straight away that the, the three servants are, are not to be trusted. There's something odd about them. Um, and... Um, does, don't they like to find out that like uh, they just because they said they came because of a newspaper ad or something, and we find out that the ne- the letter never even got picked up. Yeah, yeah, that's right, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, so they I just sort so, of yeah. turned up randomly and sort of played the part. They they, they could sense that a job that a job was going, couldn't they? They just could sense it. I mean, that's that's good. That's the job said they'd be proud of them for yeah, that. Yeah, they'd be like, yeah. God, that's really good. I know you got to try and apply for a certain amount of jobs per week, but that's that's really going to, to go the extra mile. Just sensing a job is needed, and then just going and applying. Yeah, uh, the, the little kid, the little kid, Grace. She um, says there's been some weird. There's other people in the house. Um, says there's a little boy called Victor. Um, they've been saying the voice. The house is theirs. Um, threatening to remove the curtains and all this kind of thing. Um, and Threat, threatening to remove. The- I'll remove the curtains, I will. Don't do it. I'm photosensitive. I bloody will. I bloody will. Yeah, is that like... Uh, so what would happen? Would they burst into... I think uh, they burst into flame in, in, in a similar way that like Dracula would. Right, uh, right. What photosensitivity is basically vampirism. vampirism. Um, yeah, they hate garlic as well. Confirmed. Okay. So, uh, wait, so... Th- I mean that's not that's not true. <laughs> obviously, but like, <laughs> is this like a real disease? This photo sensitivity. I bet like, there's, there's, probably, there's probably something like that where you probably break out and blotches in your skin or something. It's probably something, right. something yeah. like that. But Nicole Kidman, I mean, let's be honest, <laughs> as great, is pretty hysterical throughout this film, isn't she? I mean, yeah. she'd be annoying to be around. I think in any in any sense. I mean, I like Nicole Kidman, but yeah. my yeah. God, she's hysterical. She gets that gun out. Way too often. Yeah. Any any time something else, something's happening. Yeah. Well, the gun's the answer. Yeah, the we know. We know she would have voted for it, in America. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> um, she's just like, well, what's happened? Uh, oh God, I cut my finger. I'll dice some onions. The gun. <laughs> the gun's the answer. <laughs> yeah. Ready onions. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So yeah, she, so uh, she has she she's in the house, and the, if anyone's got photo sensitivity, I think it must be her because her skin is incredibly pale. Um, just, just in everything I've seen her in, but um, she hears a noise upstairs and she knows everyone's downstairs, so she's instantly like got the shotgun out and they're, they're searching the house, um, and then 
I don't know. What, so they just sort of sit around the house. They don't find there's anything. Just, there's just a weird, a weird few scenes of like different occurrences, like footsteps, voices, very, very, various other things. She orders obviously everyone to search the house, um, and then when that's happening, she finds this like book of the dead, which is basically an album of like loads of dead people, mm. uh, loads of deceased family members who possibly lived in the house before them. So obviously, this starts to ramp up the idea that there's a ghost there are actually some ghosts in this house because obviously the girl's saying she's seen them she's seen a boy she's seen an old lady she's seen a couple of other people that's quite creepy when you see the drawing that the girl's done of like five yeah. different people she writes down next to them the amount of time she's actually seen them so she's got like a little boy five a man two a woman like a couple and then she's drawn this like pretty terrifying looking old woman with like wild hair and like no pupils in her eyes, and she's written like seventeen next to it or something. And that then, was pretty. As, that then, was as, as it's zoomed in onto that seventeen, she crosses it out and writes eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> god. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that was kind of creepy. So, yeah, there isn't really many scares though. Do you think? Because I don't remember anything being particularly scary. There's just a kind of like a an ominous sense of. Yeah, it's just slightly creepy. It's slightly creepy stuff. Like, that was pretty creepy. That put the willies up me a little bit. You know what I mean? Put Ooh, the willies up me. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> oh, other than that, other than that, it was the music was, was getting me on edge. And that was literally because of the fluctuation in volume. Nothing else. Nothing yeah. else. And I've said that already. But yeah. there was nothing else that was really getting me. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bit where um, the two kids are in bed and... Uh, the boy hears someone walking around or something, and she, he asks the sister to shut up. And he says, "Not me, it's Victor." And it like yeah. it goes to like a curtain, and that's kind of creepy because uh, it looks like it, he's going to be there. And he starts talking. You can't tell if it's her that's talking in his voice. It's all kind yeah. of kind of strange and odd. There are uh, moments where you kind of expected a scare. You expected them to look, and then suddenly yeah. there'd be a little boy there or something. But See, I this, think they if didn't... that was today, I think they would have like had a jump scare like some would have just like walked across the hallway or you know ran across the from the curtains yeah i think i think they did really well at sort of explaining the well obviously again we'll get to it but mm. explaining the sort of difference between the ghost world and the real world yeah yeah such uh there's a bit where uh i hear you want to say nicole kidman a character called grace she finds like um she's like searching around the house and she finds like a photo book of um, people, and she thinks they're like asleep. I've seen these photos in in, in real life. Um, it's, yeah, it's a tra- tradition back in the day where when people died, you used to dress them up and make them almost look like they're alive, and then and then take a picture of them. Just um, having a lovely little bit looks like having a lovely sleep, lazy bastards. <laughs> yeah, and um, so she finds this book, and it's like full of these people who are, who she finds that are dead, um, and she asks for um, Mr. Tuttle to get rid of it, and. I was thinking, this is like an incredibly boring life, like in that house because they don't go anywhere, they don't do anything. The kids are constantly getting told off. Yeah, they're, um, they're not allowed. To they can't have any light on their skin. I mean, I love basking in the light. That's my favourite thing, and they can't do that. Yeah, it is oh, nice. it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty boring life. They're always in pajamas as well. They are always in pajamas. I didn't even pick that up. Yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah, that book could have kept them entertained for, for years. Minutes, oh, <laughs> years. <laughs> we went Minutes. on two different sides of the scale there, but uh... <laughs> years. How long would you have been entertained by that book, Luke? Do you reckon? Well, I mean, not like in one long like block. Like you look at ten minutes. Oh, I go, see. Oh, creepy. Not so in one think... long block. <laughs> Luke's not come to work for weeks. Where is he? He's, found he's got this new book. He got a book of the dead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he hasn't had a wash in three weeks. Uh, he's not been eating. He is now looking. dead. Yeah, he is. He is now dead. He has yeah. now become dead. Yeah. And he left in his will. Please take a photo of me, uh, all dressed I've up nice. Blank page. And the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right at the back. <laughs> L- LK written on there, ready for you. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so um, at this point, Nicole Kidman she asks Mr. Tuttle to get rid of the book, and then she starts talking to uh, the laundrette woman, <laughs> Mrs. Mills, about. Like when she worked in the house before, and she said, "Yeah, they used to work in here." And then um, their employees uh, employees moved back to London. I think she says, and um, they're all evacuated due to the tuberculosis tuberculosis. Oh my god, tuberculosis outbreak. <laughs> <laughs> there was an outbreak of tuberculosis, Tuber- and the, the outbreak TB. was you couldn't yeah. say the word. No wonder you couldn't say it, the word. TB jab. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a tuberculosis? Tuberculosis. Tobacco. Just do any old jab in my arm, please. <laughs> I'll have anything. 
Uh, there's like a, a scene pretty soon after. Uh, there's like a empty piano that's not allowed to play, and I think she hears someone playing it again. This is all kind of classic. That's what I mean. Like it's all kind of standard ghost haunting yeah. bits. Yeah. And then she goes back to the piano and she sort of locks it up, doesn't she? And then locks it up with the key and then yeah. turns around and pretty much is open again. Yeah. 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 Um, again, again, whenever these things are happening, Nicole Kidman goes straight for the gun. She does. She's uh, trigger happy. Um, She's trigger happy. She's like, well, if there are any ghosts in there, I'm going to shoot them because obviously that works. Yeah, yeah. I'll blow their bloody brains off. There's a bit where Mrs. Mills um, says something about, well, they're, they're definitely like sometimes the, the world of the living and the dead get a bit mixed up, and uh, that's probably something that's happening right now. And then uh, um, Nicole Kidman is like, "That's bullshit," uh, but then she says like she's going to the priest or something. She's going to get someone to bless the house. She's going to go find a priest, and he's going to come back, and he's going to sort the house out. Uh, he's going to bless the house, get rid of the old ghostly spirits. Uh, and this is where sort of the stuff from the servants starts to, the fact that they, they're a bit untrustworthy starts to really get confirmed pretty much. Because mm-hmm. um, when she's going, she kind of mentions to Mr. Tuttle that uh, to, to, if, if to, to look for a cemetery that was on the outskirts of the house where perhaps some people have been buried. And I think she's trying to sort of match these to the people who she can see. Who sort of the little girl can apparently see, so Victor, etc. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when that happens, obviously Mrs. Tuttle, Mrs. Tuttle, no. The woman, maybe Mrs. Mills. Her name is Mrs. Yeah. Mills. Sorry, yes, yeah, Mr. Tuttle. Um, so she sort of says to him, or, or, "Do you reckon we're ready to tell her yet?" They say something like that, don't they? Well, yeah, and um, she says no, and they sort of hide the gravestones in in the in the leaves. Yeah. So it's almost like they're complicit in something. Something. I don't know if we necessarily needed this at this particular point because I think we were kind of suspicious of them anyway. And having this actual conf- confirmation that they were untrustworthy, don't think it was necessarily needed. It was almost like, look, look at what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Felt a little bit obvious. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it was a bit wink, wink, nudge, nudge. nudge. Um, <clears throat> so whilst looking, trying to get outside of, of the, the sort of the grounds, um, so you get sort of lost in the mist. There's something in the mist, um, and it's uh, not monsters. It's um, her husband, played by Christopher Eccleston. Um, I don't know his name. I think he's just referred to as husband throughout the film. Um, Charles. 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 Oh, Charles. Okay, cool. And he turns up, and as soon as he sees Nicole Kidman, he goes, oh, I'm gagging for a shag. <laughs> I'm absolutely gagging for a shag. I've been to war. Uh, get yourself indoors. That's pretty much what he says to her, because that's pretty much what he did. Yeah, so I'm not really sure. I mean, they don't, they don't shake right away, but he looks... <laughs> I don't know. I don't really understand if he's supposed to be a dead guy. I don't really know what's going on there. But um, he comes in. He, he doesn't seem particularly happy. He doesn't no. seem, he's he's apparently home from the war, um, but he, they bring him in the house. They sort of... Turns out he loved the war. Uh, yeah. he, he's having a well of time. Yeah. Um, and... Now he's back. He's like bloody hell, back to this old shit again. Yeah, so he goes straight to bed, as all depressed people do. Um, and then we ha- now we have like the best scene of the film, like the most iconic one for me, which is where she uh, Nicole Kidman like puts like a veil. She made this veil for her little daughter Anne. She puts her in it. She looks very pretty, and then says, "I'll be back in a sec." Pops out. Has a number one or a two. She doesn't actually specify. And uh, then, could, um, could, could, have, could have been a bit of both. Could have been a bit of both. It normally is. And, uh, <laughs> and then she comes back and then she hears, um, I think like she hears like an old lady or something singing or something. Well, no, she basically hears, hears Anne singing. That's right, um, yeah, yeah. But then when she looks looks behind the sort of veil, she's playing with like a little doll thing. She sees a little old lady's hand. Yeah. A little old lady's wrinkly hand. Yeah. And that's quite yeah. scary because then she obviously rounds goes around the girl very and the girl's still got a veil on her face but you see that it's an old lady with old lady with very milky eyes yeah yeah and then she's um, like where's my shotgun but, uh, she's like where's your shotgun i'm gonna blast this bitch to hell <laughs> but yeah so basically it is it is a little girl's voice and then she says like what the hell have you done with my daughter and she goes are you mad are you mad mummy yeah 
I am your daughter, and then she destroys her. And then, Nicole right. Kidman goes in hammer and tong, <laughs> gives her a couple of the one, get, gives her yeah. a couple of the old Mayweathers, right, the old chops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty much um, uh, you know a riff on the Luke I am your father scene, and he goes no. <laughs> <laughs> I am your daughter and she goes no and then she sort of races in kicks yep. her in the chops and then um, and when she rips the veil off it is just her daughter so she's, well is, she's yeah. Nicole yeah. Kidman's like bloody hell I'm glad I didn't go and get the gun because I would have yeah. killed you yeah and then uh, so the daughter runs away she's terrified of her own mum she goes to the husband um, and then we get like a, a weird sort of scene where uh, the husband Charles says tell me what happened on some particular day Um and they have like a bit of a um, an argument, but I think they actually say what they're arguing about. Uh, yeah. And then this is when the shag happens. Because he's like, I'm going to go. And then she says, no, wait. And then they have a shag. But the thing is... <laughs> you say, this is when the shag happens. <laughs> oh, well, the shag's going up, shag's going up. Here it comes. There it is. I only say shag because um, they're, they're talking in this sort of British accents. Um, and I feel like they would say shag like that in a sort of Austin Powers way. But... Um, <laughs> Proper shag. Yeah. There's a, way bit, there's a way bit after the after the sex where um, they're sleeping and their faces are like so close to each other. And I was like, that's yeah. not real. That's not <laughs> no real. One hot sleeps breath. like that. Yeah. Hot breath all over each other. Your breath getting caught in a horrible whirlwind. No. Yeah. You're trying to sleep and it's this like no, um, condensation of someone else's breath on your cheeks. Yeah. How could, how could you relax? Yeah. Leave me alone. So then when she wakes up, um, finally wakes, gets out of bed, the lazy bint, uh, Charles has actually gone. He's disappeared. They don't know where he's gone. Um, he's just, you know, he's gone back to the war. or He's wherever. done one. Yeah, yeah. he's just like, he's got what he wanted uh, from young Nicole. And he's gone. See you later. <laughs> um, and then um, the, the kids are screaming. Uh, all the curtains in the house have disappeared. Like every single one. All the, all the water is getting into the house, you know, the light. Um, yeah. She chucks over a coat, and, and then I think she sort of blames the um, Mrs. Mills and Mr. Tuttle for removing the coat. Yeah, she basically thinks that it was them, and then when she starts arguing with them, um, they obviously, they're like, well, it would be all right if they got a bit of light now and again. So you're, it's almost like, right, okay, so what's going on here? Are they genuinely trying to hurt the children, or do they just not believe grace that those kids have got the photo sensitivity you know what are they doing yeah. Tuttle, Tuttle says something about his, his mum or his sister having like real bad rheumatism yeah yeah that's what I mean. and so then he one day it's gone and then one day it was gone like he always sort of has that weird slow way of, of talking and it's like it's almost like he's saying so if they've got an illness basically one day it'll just be gone yeah. so that's fine there's a bit earlier when um uh, they said like are you any good at like uh, gardening and working hard and he goes yes we're very good at uh, uh, gardening <laughs> and, it's almost uh, like it should, it should have, almost like it shouldn't have been a take yeah exactly. the <laughs> yeah. answer's gone perfect you came across well as an absent minded I think what happened <laughs> yeah well, I'm, I'm very good at gardening and uh, line hard work like <laughs> Like, they've like, just edited we'll that, that together. And, yeah. and, the, and the director's gone, we'll just keep that in because it feels real, real, right? And it feels really yeah. realistic. I love it. I love it. I love it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah. And Mr. Tuttle's like, what? Sure. Uh, where's my pie? Okay. And then, um, uh, so yeah, she just kicks them out. She just kicks the servants out. Um, she goes, bloody do one, you mugs. Trying to kill my kids. With the shotgun again. She's like, See get out. Because that's the only way you can fire people these days is with a yeah. shotgun. Get the yeah. fuck out of my office. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so and, then Mrs. Tuttle, then, uh, Mrs. Mills is, is miffed. She's like, bloody hell, that Nicole Kidman is the right sort. She says, uncover the gravestones, and then ominous music tells you to feel ominous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel ominous? Yes. Good. <laughs> um, okay, so, so what happens now? So I think she's searching for the curtains. Um, she can't find yeah. them. And then that night, the kids go sneaking outside to look for their dad, who obviously went missing. And they're like, if he's gone missing, he's clearly just going to be milling about outside, so we'll just go and find him. Yeah, yeah. And when, they, when they go, they go and find the graveyard. That's right, and yeah. So, yeah, so uh, the, the the boy, little boy, runs a little further on. At the same time, Grace finds the book of the dead. She finds a photo of our three servants dead. 
uh, Anne, the little girl, finds the gravestones and sees their names, right? Yeah. So then they both sort of realise that uh, these these bitches are dead. And then, the um, servants are ghosts. Yeah. They're the ghosts all along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, okay, so uh, the boy is like, I don't believe you, you're always teasing me. Um, it always happens, the little siblings, um, they're always teasing each other. They're always saying people are dead when they're not. And um, just the way it is with little kids. And have you got a sister, by the way? Yeah, I do. We've got two ever, sisters. You, all right, me too. Older. Oh. Uh, both younger. One's oh. really young. One's uh, one's nine. Wow, that is young. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, now the three of them have gone full on uh, ghostly, ominous, ominous sort of evil. Because they're like walking in a sort of slow walk towards the kids. Um, yeah, that's you do. Yeah, because when people are saying they're dead, they're ghosts. Like, you don't want to go, no, we're not. You don't want to, like, light things up. Hey, we're not dead. Hey, look, we're not you dead. Walk if really we were dead. Slow. If we were dead, could we do this? One of them's juggling. One of them's yeah. on a unicycle. <laughs> one of them's spinning plates. No, just walk slowly. Say nothing. And no, just, we're yeah, not dead. Do the old creepy eyes as you walk towards them. Exactly. And, uh, the little boy runs. A little girl says, okay, I believe you. They run away. They run to the mum. Um, she locks them out of the house. And yeah. you get a really nice shot here, actually, of... She says to the two kids, you go upstairs, I'll watch the front door. And like she locks the door. And the three servants, I found this like a, a really nice shot. So the, the three servants are just sort of looking in through the window. They're kind of underlit. Um, and they, they're kind of mostly silhouette. And they're sort of looking in. And they're saying about, wait, how does this reveal happen? Um, I feel like it's clever in a way I'm thinking <laughs> and I'm remembering it. Yeah. I mean, this bit was good because this was a bit where they could have clearly just walk through the door you know if they, that if that was a, again if that was a different film yeah. they would have like walked through the door and that would have been confirmed that they were ghosts but the fact that they could stay outside knocking pretty much to come in let us in yeah yeah so that's it so she says you can't shoot us here the, t- the tuberculosis uh, killed us off years ago um, oh and then okay yeah and then they say um you're dead. I don't know how they reveal. I'm sure there's a smarter way that they do this. It might... No, no. I think they basically say to Nicole Kidman that you know the living and the dead need to find a way to live together. Essentially, right? Okay, so and, we don't we don't reveal but, yet. That's right. Okay. So there's, there's no reveal yet. But the reveal happens when the kids go upstairs to their bedroom, hide. They hide in a cupboard, yeah. and then obviously someone's trying to open the door, open the sort of cupboard, and when it opens, suddenly bang, it's the old lady the old lady okay. that Anne's already been seeing and then Nicole Kidman's character obviously runs upstairs to see mm-hmm. what, what's going on um, and the reveal sort of happens That's it's right, not yeah. like a big it's not like a huge reveal like bang this is, you're kind of it's one of those reveals where you're like trying to work out exactly what, what the reveal means mm. even though we kind of know yeah, so basically when, yeah. when she opens the door the room's kind of completely changed there's some sort of seance happening in the middle of the room with the old lady and the new sort of residents of the house who are um, sort of Keith Allen is one of them, <laughs> uh, and they're sort of they're sort of communicating, making contact with ghosts, and then we realise the ghosts are the children and Grace. Yeah, this I actually found this a really good scene. So the the sound the sound design is really good. So the seance, the the blind old woman has got the pencil scratching against the the paper. Um, she's asking uh, the the kids why did their mother kill them or something like that. Um, and then they're saying, we're not dead, we're not dead. They're screaming. Music's getting all sort of tense and stuff. Um, and then Nicole Kidman uh, goes crazy and starts shaking the seance table and ripping up the papers. And we see it from the present-day perspective, and they're seeing what looks like a, like a classic haunting. Um, it's, quite, it's quite good. I, I, th- I think it was, it was... I don't know, I thought it was quite a nice uh, little... Uh, <laughs> bless you. Uh, I, 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 you, I, quite liked it. I thought it was quite a nice little reveal. The, the yeah, yeah, it there. was good. Mm. The the flitting back and forth between the ghost world, which which is where Grace and the kids exist, and then the actual world where we saw she was shaking the table pretty hardcore in her world, but in the in the real world it was shaking just a little bit. Mm. That yeah. was cool. To sort of try and work out the rules and the the parameters of these worlds and how they how they work, which is that they they can coexist and they yeah. do affect one another, but they don't affect each one another in such an extreme way so they can essentially live separately 
Yeah, yeah. If they wanted to, because then it's pretty much confirmed that they are they all are all ghosts. And then Nicole Kidman, uh, sorry, Grace, kind of starts to realise exactly what happened, and we kind of find out that she smothered the kids. She obviously went mad at some point, smothered the kids to death, and then shot herself with her favourite shotgun. Obviously, the classic shotgun. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the present day, they the, the residents decide to move out. Um, because they're not, they don't like the hauntings. So Victor and, and these these people move. Um, in the in the ghost world, the other world, Mrs. Mills says um, the others come and go. For, sometimes you can scare them off. Sometimes they just leave. Sometimes you won't even notice them at all. Um, yeah, it's weird. And then um, the kids decide to. Uh, do they just decide to stay with the mum? Then is that how that happens? Yeah, so they obviously realise that they're no longer photosensitive, so they sort of go out and play in sunlight. Um, the house sort of gets put, put up for sale, mm. and then Grace. It's weird because like Grace is very religious; she's very she's like Catholic. Uh, but here, it's where Anne sort of says to Grace, "Are we in limbo?" And she says, "She's not even sure anymore. She ain't got a bloody clue." So is it? Is it? So Christopher Eccleston's character Charlie, when he comes back from the war. Um, what's happening there? So is he is he dead? And then he's like just trying out. So what I reckon is he's dead. He died when he was at the war, uh, when he was in, at the war, and he somehow crossed over into this place as a dead person. But he's obviously not quite. He's still not quite sure what's happened, what's going on. So he kind of feels like, do, you know, do, do I want to be here? Do I do I not? Do I, do I belong somewhere else? That's what I kind of got from that. Well, and then when he finds out the truth of it, he. Um... Decides he doesn't want to stay. With he doesn't him. want to stay. Yeah, it's almost like mm. they they they're kind of all where they they they're sort of haunting the place where they died. So maybe he's drawn back to them for some, for some reason because it's his family. But really, he's drawn back to the war it's where the he war, actually that, died. Yeah, because he's going to occupy that place. Maybe. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, no, it's quite. I quite, I mean, you like. I think you're right. It's not so much that the twist ending is effective in its in its way, but. It's kind of like you kind of understand what the twist is going to be, but um, it's it's how how will it develop and what does that mean for the for the characters and, and that. Yeah, because kind of I think yeah. as as a reveal, revealing that the servants are um, ghosts, mm. that kind of feels good. Uh, that kind of feels like a big reveal. That feels like it could be the big reveal, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's almost like there's a there's a level of reveals now, aren't there? So yeah. we're going from. Going from something that's like the servants are the, are the ghosts. Oh no, actually, the main characters are the ghosts. So, I mean, it is pretty, pretty effective, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, jump scares, scary bit. I never did any jump scares. There's um, there was a bit uh, obviously uh, where the old woman um, is under the veil. That that was kind of scary. And there was yeah. a bit where where they're hiding in the in the closet. The two kids. And then she says, "Stop breathing," because uh, he's like breathing like really. Um, in fact, the mum said that earlier on as well. And I thought, I wonder if that's a reference to uh, smothering them. Um, she says, "Stop breathing" when he's breathing really loud. Uh, but then he says, it's, um, "Then he starts breathing, but he can still hear someone breathing." I thought that was kind of scary. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it just. Um, I don't. I don't think it was a particularly scary film. It's, it's kind of creepy, kind of PG. I wonder if it was a PG yeah. actually. Mm, yeah, it was pretty PG. Had a creepy vibe, I think. Obviously, not too many jump scares. Didn't, didn't really matter, I guess. Um, and the reveal you kind of see coming. I think it's. I think rather than being a big reveal, it does feel kind of drip fed throughout the film. Mm, yeah. um, guide guide you quite a lot towards the twist, rather than hitting you with it and then going bang. Well, it, what it the wasn't, hell? It wasn't a Shyamalan like rug pull, which I think no. people lump it in with. No, no, not at all. You, it was kind of like a, if you watch the film and you really do take it in. It, even if you didn't know the twist, it's got to be one of the things you're thinking. Yeah. That thought must cross your mind when you're thinking, "Wait a minute, are these guys ghosts after all?" Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, man, are you ready for some trivia? Yes. Okay, cool. So, number one, um, well, I don't tell you these people. So, Alakina Man, who plays Anne, the little girl, James Bentley, who plays uh, Nicholas, the little boy, they were cast after an intensive search that encompassed five thousand children. Wow, true. yes, that sounds like it could be true. True, and I, I think they were probably just going for like, because they look like stereotypical ghost English ghost children. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <It's not> like, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. something about them, like especially the Thomas kid. Like he just looks like he 
even if I saw him in real life, I'd be like, oh fuck. Is that <laughs> oh Jesus, no, he's, he's got one of his faces. No offense yeah. to him. Oh, he's obviously he's obviously grown up now. He's got one of his faces. He's got like a slightly adult face, even though he's like a little child. Yeah, yeah. He's like an adult trapped in a child's body. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> Okay, uh, number two. Nicole Kidman actually quit during rehearsals uh, because playing Grace gave her nightmares. So she never appeared in the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. False? Well, I mean, well, that last bit I added just then was, was false. But apparently the uh, she quit during rehearsals. It doesn't actually say. It just said Nicole Kidman actually quit during rehearsals. You know what that means? Quit the rehearsal. So it's probably like the end of the day. <laughs> it's gone, I'm quitting this rehearsal now. Oh, well, that's right, Nicole, because um, so we were five minutes away from finishing. <laughs> yeah. We were five minutes away from finishing. I'm off, actually. Somebody write that down as a thing that happened, all right? That's a thing that happened. I was so scared by this thing. Yeah. Get it into the marketing for the film because they're going to be terrified. Yeah. This makes it sound like she actually quit. But yeah, I, I get it. I get the point. So that's two, two out of five. Okay, number three Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise. Uh, they were together at the time of this film. Uh, Tom Cruise's high profile divorce was finalised the same week as the others was released on account of Tom Cruise being totally convinced that Nicole was actually a ghost. Oh, Jesus. Um, is he still convinced of that? I think he is. He's like, she's still hanging around. So, Bloody hell. <laughs> That's got to be false. He's been a ghost uh, all along. I mean, I know Tom Cruise is a Scientologist, but, um, you know. Yeah, he's a very, very smart Scientologist. He's and, a very smart guy, yeah. But, um,. So, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> so if she isn't a ghost, just 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 uh, riddle me this, Mister Errington. If she isn't a ghost, what what film has she been in since? Um, oh, well, what, None, I watched. Her... I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even let me finish. None. She's been in none. Okay. Exactly. If you go back to those films that you think she's in, you turn them on, and she's not in them. <laughs> Someone else. Yeah, she's in them, but she's a ghost. Um, okay, so uh, I think you got that one right. I can't remember what. I'm pretty sure you yeah. got that one right. Yeah. Okay, uh, number four. There is a Bollywood remake of the film um, called <laughs> Hum Kaun Hai, but they changed the major plot point of the film. Can you tell me what the major plot point of the film they changed was in the Bollywood oh, version? So it actually was a Bollywood remake. Yeah. Um, the major plot film. <laughs> <laughs> the major plot point they changed. Yeah. Um, it was when Christopher Eccleston came back. He didn't come back for a shag. He came back for a lovely Bargy. roast dinner. <laughs> came back for a party. <laughs> <laughs> the whole reveal of, the, of them being ghosts was a big song and dance number. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the the thing that the major thing that changed in the film is that all of the characters were Indian. Okay. Number five. <laughs> <laughs> is that a point? Is that a plot point? Feels pretty major. It's a major, you know, production. Pretty major, point, anyway. yeah. You just wrote. That's a spanner that works there. Because usually you give me true or false. Now you're asking me to conjure answers myself. I'm not. I'm just not I'm trying to I'm mix it cool. up. <laughs> okay. Um, well, okay. Number five. To get the kids worked up, um, Alejandro would play scary music uh, when they weren't expecting it. I bet it was his music, wasn't it? I bet it was his. <laughs> music he's really pushing the fact that he can score <laughs> he's just like hey wouldn't this moment be even more scary does ah! uh, i think he was True. comparing it like by humming the tracks as he was, yeah. as he was doing the camera movements nicole just shotgunning him <laughs> uh, I, can, I can imagine that that's true yeah uh it's true yeah so i think you got them all right um well you know you didn't quite get the indian one oh, i definitely got them all right mate <laughs> Okay, uh, we need to grade the film. What uh, What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Um, it's all right, you know. I mean, it ain't amazing. It's always been a film that I've kind of always thought I didn't really like, and I guess this this watching it again hmm. kind of confirmed that. But I definitely enjoyed certain parts of it. But I would probably go no higher than a C. Yeah, yeah. Uh, C. Okay, so I wrote down a C, but I think I'm gonna give it a C plus. I, I think. It's um, I don't know what it is. I think it's it's a very 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 well made film, very tight and tight and um, tight like a tiger. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just like it's really well made. It's you know, it's it's. But does that kind of is that I mean this? Sorry to interrupt. But does no, that sorry. mean it's kind of a bit devoid of soul? It's a bit devoid of. I think like. I don't. I think things can be too neat and too perfect, and a, yeah, it, it, it feels ever so neat and everything. Yeah, perfect. It almost feels like, um, yeah, like it's just been. There's probably loads left on the cutting room floor from this, and it's kind of just been 
really cut. Yeah, but but like I would say, um, so this film is is a Spanish American co production. This is like the I think they said like the highest grossing or the fourth highest grossing Spanish film ever made. Um, mm. And so I feel like giving it that PG vibe and um, it's like got like a family horror esque element to it, and it tells a very clean, neat story, and you know delivers the punchline. Is effect- it's like uh, watching um, what's that comedian called? Um, uh, the one who does the looks a bit Asian, but isn't Asian. You know who I mean? <laughs> the English comedian. He's like um, a family entertainment sort of comedian. Michael McIntyre. Yeah, it's like watching him. Like it's all very polished and clean and good. Um, yeah, and it's like good, but like it doesn't, I don't feel changed in any way. It's like the most vanilla version of exactly. something. Exactly, vanilla. Yeah, plain, ready salted like horror film. Ready salted. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, like it's it's, it's enjoyable, but at, but like you never really want to. Like, never go feels dangerous. Drunk. Like you never feel. Yeah. There's no danger to it. If you find yourself like, belly laughing at Michael McIntyre uh, jokes, then yeah. obviously, yeah, you love ready salted. And I feel like maybe after watching, um, you know, Night of the Living Dead and um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, those films felt dangerous, and they were like told in like the seventies, and 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 this film was told like in the noughties, and it just feels so plain. Um, but it's yeah. good. But it's good. So I'm going to give it a C plus. Cool. That's fair, I think, Luke. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, next week we're going to be discussing, we're going to be going a year later. I would say I don't think this film should be this high on this list. I don't think it quite lives up to the other films that we've seen so far in terms of uniqueness. And This film as in the others? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, the one, no, no. The one coming up def- definitely deserves, probably deserves to be definitely high. Definitely not. Actually. Okay, yeah, so next week we're going to be um, talking about number 25 on the list, 28 Days Later, directed by Danny Boyle, starring Celine Murphy in one of his first... <laughs> roles I think um, yep. and, the, yeah. and uh, Naomi Harris who does she play she just plays um, another survivor in the, in the film the black woman <laughs> yeah okay cool yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so yeah this show is brought to you by Stoke Studio Hawk and Cleaver head over to www.hawkandcleaver.com and grab a free book become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Hawk and Cleaver thanks to Kovach Cowman for our theme music thanks to ACAST for hosting the show um, if you have any opinions on 28 Days Later go over to facebook.com search for Horror Hangout Board of Advisors and request to join the group because you know we, we talk about it there um, thanks to the listeners if you enjoyed the show give us a 5 star rating review on iTunes and thanks to my co-host Ben for being a real horror dude cheers dude thank you Luke <laughs>